yourselves for us? Sure. I'm Kathy Calvin. I'm the President and CEO of the United Nations Foundation. And I'm Richanda Van Leeuwen. I'm Executive Director for Energy Access at the United Nations Foundation. Uh, so we'll start with you, Kathy. Um, First of all, you have a tremendous background in media. Uh, we'll, we'll cover it in the article, but uh, tremendously with AOL, Time Warner, and, and uh, a number of other organizations. What do you think of the media situation today for consumers and for the media industry itself? Because obviously things have changed a lot and, uh, since the internet got big. You know, the internet revolutionizes everything that it touches, and it's touching everything in our world today, from energy to media to education to the way we buy, shop, learn. So it was inevitable it was going to really affect media. What was amazing to me was how long a lot of media leaders kept their head in the sand <laughs> and pretended it wasn't going to happen, or that they could write it out, and, and clearly those who saw the opportunity of the converging technologies, what you could do on your phone, now you could do on your computer, now you could do on your TV. Those who understood the power of that really may have made a difference. And the second thing is those who understood the power of changing from the top-down, one-to-many dynamic to really understanding we're in a world in which everyone is a publisher, everyone can be a journalist, and everybody has a voice is a powerful world for achieving what we need to achieve. So I think it's really great what's happened, but it's clearly changed the, multi the business models for a lot of people. Yeah, it's great for consumers. Uh, it's a big challenge for the industry. Um, do you, there's still a lot of major media organizations, I think, that are struggling to adapt. Uh, what, do you, what do you think in 10 years the, the situation will look like with the media landscape? I think it's hard to picture exactly what's going to happen in 10 years. Um, we will probably have exactly two or nothing trends. at all. Exactly or nothing at all <laughs> no, is a kidding. good answer. <laughs> no. But I think we have two trends going on at the same time. One is huge uh, diversity, and sites like yours are coming up really strong because they're fulfilling a niche for people who want a specific kind of information and they want to go deep and they want trusted sources. And at the same time, there's a conglomeration impact that's bound to happen as the big companies learn how to buy up and package the smaller ones. So I think we're going to see two things happening at once, a multiplicity of targeted media that will, will serve and, and, draw, and derive a lot from consumers themselves and the large companies that will take advantage of it. Well, I think you nailed it for us. I mean, we, we, I attribute so much of our success to the readers yes. who I get great ideas from. I get great content from sometimes. Sometimes I turn them into writers. Uh, but the, I've learned, I think, half of what I've learned in the past five years has been from the readers wow. themselves. Uh, but, but it's really interesting because we start out as a very niche site in clean tech. And now today, exactly what you're saying, I feel like we had to break out and create a solar site, an electric vehicle site, because it just gets more and more uh, dis distributed. Interesting. And are your readers telling you that, and they're and they're bringing you those ideas to you? Is that what you're saying? That was more of a realization that some people come for this, some people come for that. Yeah. We need to have sites that cover these specific niches, and then the overarching one, and then there's other overarching ones above us, not in our organization, that you know reference us. Uh, and then we have the Washington Time, uh, Washington Post, and New York Times for referencing us because we're the clean tech people, you know. Yeah. So it's a, I think you you you've nailed it, and uh, it's really nice to see that someone saw that picture early on from the from the major media. Uh, but getting to to um, what you're doing today, uh, you went from politics to media to online media to philanthropic philanthropic work. Uh, can you discuss the personal side of those transitions and what drove them? Uh, you can pick and choose or several there. <laughs> well, it sounds like I couldn't keep a job, but actually, <laughs> they all built on each other. And um, for me, two themes were really critical. One, one was that I'm very happy I've worked in all three sectors. And I think increasingly, that's a, a recipe for success to understand the language that each sector uses, because they're all pretty different, uh, what the motivations are, and then how they work together, because the future really depends on all three sectors being problem-solving together. So 
so that's one. So I'm happy I was able to move from one segment to another. And the other theme is what I think let me do that pretty seamlessly. And that I think um, I'm not an expert in energy, I'm not an expert in education, and I'm not an expert in philanthropy even, but I'm pretty good at translating and taking an idea that is being developed in one realm and helping shape it and put it into another. So in philanthropy, which is what we do, we support the United Nations, we really work carefully to figure out what are the business practices that are working around the world that we can bring to our philanthropic work so that we're even more effective and efficient. And then we try to invite businesses in to learn how they can help achieve the development goals that the whole world has to have. There's room for the business sector in what typically was a government role, and sometimes it's a philanthropic role. We really do need the business sector to bring its assets. So I, I love that idea that we're all coming together to, to make a difference, and we understand the work that each of us can bring uniquely to that. So I, I read that you really like riding motorcycles. <laughs> So as an EV-obsessed person, um, have you tried out any of the electrics? Uh, Mission RS, uh, Zero Motorcycles, a Harley, uh, Davidson Livewire? I haven't tried any of the electric motorcycles yet, but I've looked at the Harley. Okay. You know, the so, what are some of the most exciting UN Foundation initiatives you're working on right now? Well, for me, I'm, I'm very much involved in energy, so global energy solving the issues that we see here um, so well referenced in Abu Dhabi with sustainability and energy and helping to support the change in the world's energy future is just really critically important. And there's a UN initiative, um, the Secretary General, when he was here two years ago, uh, launched the International Year of Sustainable Energy for All. We're now in year two of the decade of sustainable energy for all and we're on track for energy to take its place as an enabler for sustainable development in the UN's goals moving forward. So I'm really excited about the nexus of transformation that you can use businesses like the ones here in Abu Dhabi to help drive that sustainable change that we all need, whether it's bringing access to electricity for those who don't have it or helping to shape the energy future for those that have perhaps been using it inefficiently. So for me, that's one of the most exciting initiatives that we're working on. Yeah. You know, and Rashenda runs something that's really powerful. It's a network of entrepreneurs around the world who are showing us the way and all the different ways that energy can make a difference. It can be clean and renewable. It's called the Energy Access Practitioners Network. 2,000 members in 70 countries. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Which we really believe is also so exciting because it's that's where it's really happening. And if we can be the amplifier for it, it's, it's yeah, it's, great. It's great to see big corporations getting into clean tech and uh, renewable energy, distributed energy. But uh, yeah, what are, what are the big companies you think of when you think of clean tech? They're all uh, startups mostly, you know? <laughs> they were all startups. <laughs> And that's a great thing as well, which is that we've taken it beyond the realm of CSR. It's really about impact, it's about sustainability. And, you know, I was always taught the business of business is business. But I think the business of business is sustainability today. And uh, so we just saw the um, Zaya Future Energy Prize Awards ceremony. Uh, can you speak a little bit on the role of prizes like this one to inspire global action? Yeah, I'm a big fan of prizes. I think they allow people to dream big, have a roadmap that lets them see what's being um, awarded and how they can help be part of that story. And, and it, it's a way for all of us to see who is doing the greatest stuff around the world. So it's very exciting to me to see a prize like this one grow every year in terms of the nominations and then 